And I don't know. Well, then it gets back to the idea of, of an artificial construct such as money. So we're, we're, we're slaves to time, and then we're slaves to this money, which yeah. is the appearance. Which is intimately the connected to time. Right, right. <laughs> so, um, you know, we're buying time on the planet when everything should be free, including energy. Absolutely, and it will be very soon. And when when this when this gets going, I don't think people realize that you know the implications of of this whole thing. I mean, it is the you know uh, uh, concentrated chi mm-hmm. can do anything, mm-hmm. and um, uh, you know. So once this gets going, uh, it's 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 got to reach a uh, there's a curve, you know. Yeah. And we're only at the very very start of the curve. We got a long way to go and you know at the very end of this thing it just it may be a lord of the rings it may be um uh you know we have to storm the citadel of sauron or something right i'm serious once right once we get you know our chi back right you now then there may we may discover that you know there is some kind of darkness out there that actually has to be stopped in some way but there's no way in the world that we could stop it in our present weakened conditions right, no. right. We we have been brought down to the lowest common denominator yep. and uh, dumbed down, and our level of energy and awareness is practically nil. So exactly, and that's know. done all on purpose. Yeah, so right. You, right. You will never rebel against the monochronic structure you're stuck in. Right, right. Because once you get out of the monochronic structure, and you're not no longer working nine to five and all that, you begin to start thinking some very dangerous thoughts. Mm-hmm. And I think they don't want you thinking those thoughts. Well, the people that uh, do that now, they're, they're calling terrorists. Yes, I noticed that. I noticed <laughs> that. that they're... Funny. Yeah. They yeah, seem to be trying to cover that base. Yeah, well, next will be alchemists will be terrorists. You'll see. Oh, yeah. And then what about all the x-ray? It seems like there's a lot going on with atomics right now with the yep. uh, x-ray machines and the scatter guns and the... You know, they have uh, X-ray yep. machines that run in the cars that can drive by, and, and you know, the the, Pent- the Pentagon and all these various uh, uh, dark agencies have gone insane with with the enemy and the, what they what they want to develop in terms of bionics and uh, nanotechnology, and I mean, it's uh, just it's just it's if like you, your worst nightmare. If you, we knew. Oh. Actually, what was really being developed at DARPA? Oh, uh, oh. we probably would all want to leave the planet. Yeah, I was uh, in a, doing a lecture in 2009 in DC, and uh, after the lecture got over, a woman came up to me and she said, "Hi, I'm. I really enjoyed your lecture." Blah blah blah. And I said, "Yeah." And she said, "I work for the DoD." And I said, "Really?" <laughs> and she said, "Yeah." And I'll tell you, if I told you what we're developing. Uh, you wouldn't believe it. And I went, don't tell me. I don't want to hear. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> well, you know, we get little so, clues from the movies. I we mean, do. They throw us a bone or two through the yeah. movie industry. Oh, yeah. Well, that's yeah. completely controlled by them anyway. Right, right. Yeah, and, and you know, apparently they're developing super soldiers that are yes. genetically developed that are like six foot nine and have five foot shoulder spans and yes. can carry 200 pound guns and and, and run at yeah. uh, 30 miles an hour and and they they have I've heard the same thing and they have yep. they're developing the ability to control objects on mass from yep. a distance and uh, what I heard is that they're controlling objects uh, as a group and they're trying to control them individually so it's a matter of time before they can can do that and they might be doing it now for all we know well they probably are um, they're, they're uh, 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 every 10 years they gain a hundred years on us yeah, right right so, and they've been doing this since the 40s right so you can start adding up how far along they are they're really far man I was talking to actually I was talking to Cliff High today oh and he was telling me about how much money they've dumped into CERN and uh, I mean, a literally an endless amount of money um, in a time of, of economic shortage and problems. Uh, so it makes you wonder what CERN is really about and what they're really doing there. And why oh, do yeah. they have a statue of Shiva up front, who's the Lord of Time? Oh, uh, yeah, so. yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah. I, there, nothing is as it seems. 
No, that's not really. Sure. That's for and, sure. Uh, and then what about the you know the second space program? I I was just uh, doing some research on that, and and you've come up with a lot of this information yourself that there's a second space program, and the oh, yeah. astronauts were not taken up on one of those tin buckets that would have uh, been demolished on the way to the moon. They were transported uh, when they did go, if they did go, via the saucer technology that they Absolutely. have. Absolutely, yeah. And then the rest of them were faked by Stanley Kubrick. <laughs> <laughs> well, they're all faked by Kubrick, but they really went. Yeah. They really are reflectors on the moon and yeah. and seismometers and, and, and things like control, that. And uh, control the uh, technology. Well, I mean, um, there's a dome on the moon, um, about a three-mile-wide dome. You can go look at it. Yeah. Just yeah. Google in um, Clementine uh, Aristarchus Crater. Aristarchus Crater Clementine uh, Blue Dome. And you'll see two pictures taken by the Clementine Pentagon Mission, 1994, of Aristarchus. And then an amateur astronomer has also taken a picture of it. It's clearly a structure. It clearly has symmetry. It's clearly blue. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's all fine and dandy. Yeah, maybe, you know, the Nazis built it or the U.S. military built it. The only problem with all that is is that there's reports going back all the way back to the very beginning of the invention of the telescope, mm -hmm. uh, uh, all the great uh, astronomers uh, uh, wrote down that they reported seeing a lot of activity at the Aristarchus mm -hmm. crater, mm -hmm. including moving objects and lights and flashes. And, and when Apollo went to the moon, um, and, and, and I went through the, the images, I was, um, you know, want, wanted to find out if there was something at Aristarchus, right? Yeah. And so I went through all the, because of the reports of all the activity there through 400 years. And I went through and there was just, it just, it was all bleached out. Every time uh. you looked at, at the Aristarchus crater from NASA photographs, it was just all albedo and white and you couldn't really see anything. Yeah. And then along comes Clementine and they clicked two pictures pictures of a clearly intelligently built yeah. structure on the moon photographed by the US military almost 20 years ago. Mm. Well, uh, that's not uh, it, it, it it's not all that surprising anymore uh given the the idea that uh, the technology is so advanced and so concealed that their base is on uh, Mars and probably uh, there are things going on on Jupiter and uh, Saturn as well with those engineered uh, rings that are uh, some of them yep. finished. Um, well, that's very true, and and then you have to ask yourself, you know, what is Saturn? Yeah. Um, and and you know, is it a planet even? And um, I'm reaching some rather radical conclusions about all of that, and um, I'm feeling a little bit uh, unnerved by what I'm finding, and so I'm well, me you know, too. The, <laughs> Me too. As Terence McKenna used to say, if you're not scared, you should be. <laughs> right. <laughs> I sure love Terence McKenna. Me what, too. I miss him a lot. God, what a wonderful spirit. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah, and 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 and, and Terence looks like maybe he was on to something because. His, he, his conclusion about what was going to happen in 2012, which he really never told too many people, uh -huh. was that we were going to um, we were going to find a way to communicate, at least communicate, uh -huh. with the future, and th that the ultimate goal of technology was to find a way to communicate with the future. Mm -hmm. and, and contact them. And so he said that what he thought might happen, and I think this is like his greatest idea, and he never really talked too much about it in his talks. There are a few talks, though. Um, is that once you connect with the future, say a thousand years from now, you, uh -huh. you contact somebody a thousand years from now, and they start talking to you, right? Right. Okay. Then all of a sudden, all the technology, all the knowledge, everything that's there a thousand years from now is here. 
Right. Instantly. The right. entire future happens almost instantly. Take about a year to un- un- unravel. And that may be what they're doing at CERN. Well, I, I would take it a step further and say they've already done it. The, yeah, they may have. The future has already been communicated to the to the past, which is why things... And they're not telling us. Yeah, and that would explain how things are manipulated so easily when they know exactly what's going to happen or, or the possibilities, mm-hmm. and they can line them up because everything is kept secret. So, uh, exactly. You know, if, you, if you send something from the future back to... Uh, you know, a secret agency that you know exists, well, then they have the technology and they just build, uh, you know, bigger walls yeah. around it. So You so, got it. Yep. And, you know, that if you look at, um, you know, if, if let's just say for that, they, that there is a secret space program. Yeah. It's developed with these Nazi-derived technologies, which might even be associated with off-planet intelligences. Right. And, and they got to the moon, and they found something on the moon. They went to the blue crater. They went to the blue dome. Yeah. They went to Aristarchus. That's where I would go. Yeah, and, yeah. you know, and I would go yeah. there. Well, what's going on here at Aristarchus? And they go there, and there's a dome. Maybe yeah. nobody's living there anymore. Maybe somebody is. Yeah. Either way, you're just going to get your download right then and there. Oh, right, right. And they may have got it as early as... 62, 63, they had to have seen the structures when the lunar orbiters started sending their stuff back. Right. So, uh, you know, there was some kind of slideshow at the White House that was probably extremely (laughs) jaw-dropping. Or they already knew it, and they had the technology. They've been going there long before... And that's exa- that's probably pretty much what I think. Yeah. And yeah. so the um, and so you know they went there and they've now they're about a thousand years ahead of us. Yeah. Yeah. And they're zapping around. When I put on my night vision goggles at night, which I'm going to do tonight, <laughs> um, I can see their craft running around. Oh yes, yes. A lot of people are are documenting that now. Yep. And what's going on? Uh, Cliff High talks about the sun uh, to some extent, but. Um, we know that there's going to be a, a solar maximum coming up around 2012 or 2013. Yep. But there have been uh, various uh, uh, photographs and, and videos of ships around the sun. I mean, large ships that are almost the size of a planet. Yep. What uh, what's that all about? Do you think that's some? And there are other kinds of devices that seem to be near the. Um, where the EMPs are, yeah, well, they look like I mean, little trains, and uh, yeah, I know, yeah, they're, uh, <laughs> they're, they're, well, I mean, they're, they're coming from, they're coming. I don't know. I don't want to sound too wacky here. They're coming through a portal, yeah, uh, in, in Saturn at Saturn. That makes sense. That and, the pentagon-shaped uh, thing at the top, but for one thing, yeah, hexagonal, and yeah, it's, that's it's, it. it's, it's 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 a time. I think it's a time portal. Yeah. Okay, so I think. Uh, I think if I think that Saturn is at the outer periphery of, of our of our time torus, the uh. donut shaped uh, vortex that uh, um, creates the fourth dimension or time, uh-huh. and the sun is at the center of it, and the and I and I think Saturn is the outside perimeter, and the reason I say that is because in the Kabbalah. Mm-hmm. The Tipperus is the sun, of course, which is at the center of the Tree of Life. Mm-hmm. And um, it can be interchanged with Saturn. And so there's this, like, relationship yeah. in the Kabbalah, and, and, the, and the Hebrews were, were Saturn worshipers, which is why their day is on Saturday. And uh, they, they, you know, they have a lot of, they put a lot of emphasis on time and, and money and, and those kinds of things, because those are the things that make that Saturn is concerned with. Yeah, and, right. and so I think you can see the, this hexagonal um, cloud structure on the North Pole of, yeah. of Saturn. You know, you have to ask yourself, they took a picture in 1976, and they claimed that it was a lens that caused the uh, hexagonal thing, right, the right. aperture. Right. And I never bought that one as no, a no, photographer. No. And then they took it again, of course, with Cassini, and here we are 30, what, 40 years later, Almost, yeah, 40 years later, and it's still going. 
Mm-hmm. The cloud pattern is still moving around the North Pole. 